Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender modeling tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to model this simple screw to help improve your Blender modeling skills. So let's get straight into it. So I'll press Shift A on the keyboard and then under Mesh I'm going to left click Circle. Then I'll press Tab and enter Edit Mode. And now what I'm going to do is press E and then Z to extrude on the Z axis. Then I'll press S to scale and then Shift Z to scale only on the X and Y axis. Then I'll press G and Z to move it down a bit, and S and Shift Z to kind of move it out a wee bit. Then I'm going to press E and Z again, S and Shift Z, G and Z, and you can kind of see what I'm going for here. Around there should do. Now all I'm going to do is press S and Shift Z just to make it a little smaller. And then I'm going to press E and then Z to bring this down. And then I'll left click face, grid fill. I'm going to change my span to 1. The reason I did a grid fill is so there's no end on there, which will make Blender have an easier time calculating the surface when we add a subdivision surface. Then I'll press G and Z since I made it a little bit too deep there. Now I'm going to press Alt left click on this bottom edge loop. Then I'll press E to extrude and then S and then Shift Z to scale on the X and Y axis. I'll line it up to around there, should do nicely. And now I'm going to zoom out and then press E and then Z and bring this down. I thought that looked alright, but I'm actually going to change the size again. I press 3 on the keyboard to enter face select mode and then alt left click select all these. Then I'll press S to scale and shift Z to scale on the X and Y. Around there should do nicely. Then, like I did on the previous one, I'm going to press 2 on the keyboard to enter edge select mode, and I'll press Alt left click on this bottom edge loop. Then I'll left click face and grid fill, and change my span to 1. Now I'm going to press Ctrl R and left click here, and since I don't have a mouse, I'm going to open up this menu and just change the loop cuts here after. So around 10 should do nicely. Now I've done that, I'm going to press Ctrl B, and around there should do. Then I'll press E, S, Shift Z, and it should scale up like that. Now I'm going to make sure I'm, I've got this set to individual origins up here. Then I'll press E, S and then Shift Z to extrude and scale on the X and Y axis. Now I'll press Tab back into object mode and you can see what sort of progress we've made here. So just right click and click Shade Smooth. Then I'll come down to Object Data Properties and turn on Shade Smooth. Now you could leave it as it is there if you want to keep it quite low poly. Or you could come up to Modifier Properties, Add Modifier and click Subdivision Surface. I personally wouldn't do, do it for an uh, object like this, but I'm going to show you what steps I need to take, just in case this is what you want to do. So on to in the keyboard, in edge select mode, I'll alt left click this edge here, then I'll press shift alt left click this one as well, then I'll turn on my x-ray so I can see, and I'm just going to select these edge loops here, so I've got a full circle. I'll then come down and select this bottom edge loop, so I need to press it a couple of times, and then just shift left click these two edges here and I'll increase my mean crease value to around 0.9 should do nicely. I'll turn off my overlays and turn off my x-ray to see how that is looking. And that is looking pretty nice. Turn on my overlays again and I'll also turn on my x-ray. I'm going to alt left click this edge loop here as well and I'll also turn it to 0.9. Turn off my x-ray again and my overlays so I can see what I've got and I might actually increase that all the way up to 1. There we go. Now it's up to you if whether or not you want to make these extrusions here more hard. If I wanted to do that, I would stay in edit mode, turn on my overlays again, and I could just press alt left click, shift alt on all these edges around the extrusion here, and just increase my mean crease. And those are the differences between the two. I'm not going to bother doing that, so I'll just press ctrl z to undo that. But there's an optional step for you. And yeah, that's about it. I hope you found this modeling tutorial useful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I make videos in the future. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.